Welcome back to wagertalk.com. I'm Marco D'Angelo joined in studio today with Ralph Michaels of Cal Sports and Tony Finn. We're going to break down Sweet 16. Guys, we've got a matchup on Thursday. We've got number four seed Purdue battling number one Kansas. And you look at this Kansas team, and guys, they've rolled through their first two opponents. But their first two opponents, they had Cal Davis in the first round, which they just totally overmatched. And then they made Michigan State look bad. But, you know, Michigan State, they just weren't the same team this year. I know they had an impressive game in the first one, uh, their opening round game. But we looked at this Michigan State team all year, and just something was missing. Ralph, I'll start with you on this one. What do you look at in this one? You know, I love the matchups because you have the new college basketball with three or four guards against the big guys of Purdue, which is a rarity to have two guys uh, with Purdue. You know, Kaleeb Swanigan, player of the year, perhaps double double man, six foot nine. Then they could bring in Isaac Hayes, who's seven foot two at center. So you really have the mis mismatch problem. You know, you could have Josh Jackson for Kansas either guarding, they'll both be fours against Swanigan. Swanigan can shoot the three. When he's on the offense, he has the edge. And on the other side, Swanigan might have to cover a guard. So um, yeah, I, I like to see the coaching changes that take place during this game and see what happens between these incredible mismatches and different styles of these two teams. Now we're looking at a number, uh, Tony. Uh, Kansas is a five-point favorite. We're looking at an over-under of 157. Now I know you do have a big play on this game uh, for Thursday night, and you've been uh, the guru of going with and against uh, Kansas from your days being uh, back there. You look at this matchup, you know, Kansas, uh, you know, what do you take after those two easy wins? You know, they haven't been tested yet where Purdue, after having a big lead on Saturday against Iowa State, they blew it and then had to get into a battle the rest of the way. And so that might, you know, toughen them up going into this matchup. Yeah, without giving away the play, which they probably will anyway <laughs> while we're talking, it's, it is contra contrasting styles and not to get too... Um, too in depth with not only the game but my opinion on the game. I, I always tell people that, that are my friends, Big Ten fans, mm -hmm. that if I need a nap, I just put on a Big Ten game. I got a two hour nap. Uh, <laughs> Purdue is pretty traditional Big Ten. Bigs, uh, and we talked about this three weeks, a couple, three weeks ago about college basketball, even the NBA translates into the NBA that uh, it's become, uh, especially in the tournament, it's a guard. It's a guard game. It's a guard, having guard play, good guard play, good smart guard play is important. Uh, the offense for Purdue may be the first time KU's faced an offense that goes through their bigs for their offense, and they do go through Swanigan. They go through Swanigan. Uh, Purdue actually shoots close to 40% from the three-point line. Uh, but the losses they've had have been to teams very similar to Kansas, three or four guard sets. Um, there's a lot of variables going into this game. And again, without giving away who I think has the advantage, uh, Kansas has the guard advantage. Purdue has the big advantage. And they're playing 30 minutes from Lawrence, Kansas in the Sprint Center. Ralph, how much of an emphasis do you put on the proximity of these games to uh, one of the two schools for advantages? Oh, I give them one and a half to two points. I think it's a big advantage. You know, I, um, you know we talked about the big... Big Ten and being nap time with their offense. You know, there's only one team in the Big Ten that finished the season top 30 in my offensive rankings. That's Michigan. Purdue, by the way, was 0-2 straight up in ATS against Michigan this year. But, you know, I also looked at top 40, top top 30 offenses and defenses. Purdue's a rarity. Purdue's one of the few teams that has top 20 offense and defense. So hats off to them. They're my number 20 offensive efficiency, number 16 defense. And Kansas hasn't faced many of those as well. But when I, when I brought in the horizons a little bit and looked at what each team did against teams that ranked in my top 30 in both offense and defense, Purdue's only faced two of those teams this year, Villanova and Louisville lost to both. Kansas has played uh, four of those games, West Virginia twice, excuse me, five, West Virginia twice, Baylor twice, and Kentucky. They're three and two ATS, four and one straight up. So my, uh, my personal feel in this is um, I like Kansas to win the game. I'm not sure about the spread, 
but I do like the game to be higher scoring, and I'm going to give out the over because I think Purdue can score theirs with the big men inside. Kansas can score theirs with the three-pointers and the big men inside not being able to cover them. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, – I'm going to lean with Purdue in here for uh, my opinion in this one. And I'm looking at it, and you brought it up, the two losses to Michigan. That's their only two losses in the last 12 games. They have played well, kind of flying a little bit under the radar. The Big Ten really didn't – have a lot of marquee teams this year, you know, as compared to the ACC, the Pac-12, and the Big 12. I don't think that they were as deep. And Purdue, I think, uh, right now is a little bit underrated. And the fact that Kansas blew out both opponents in their first two opening games, I think they're a little bit on the inflated side. And I'm going to lean to the five points with uh, Purdue here uh, in this one. And uh, hopefully those bigs can keep it close down low. You know, one thing to, to – oh, the Big Ten may have not had top ten teams, but when you have five or six very good teams that knock each other off, there's a lot of times these conferences – that's why there's three teams in the Sweet 16 because people kept looking past them because there was no AP top ten teams. Exactly. But we've seen how good they've been. Absolutely. In Wisconsin, uh, we'll be talking about them in a later video, pulling the major upset over Villanova, yeah. <laughs> the defending champ. Hey, uh, we've got uh, Flashback Friday, guys, every Friday – Yes, even during the tournaments, you can get the plays, the Sweet 16 plays this Friday for just $7. We're going to do it all through baseball season. Check it out. You can get Flashback Friday, $7, any pick. Normally, you'd pay $20 or more for a play. You'll get it for just $7 each and every Friday at Wager Talk. We'll be back with more.